cortisol goes up, just like Julian when he's stressed, when in the infatuation stage of love, cortisol is through the roof. That's why you can't stay there for a very long time. Three to six months, you have to either break up or become a stable couple. Otherwise, you'll just wear yourself out. Literally, what I'm trying to say is that the final point, I don't want to go to ramble too much, but a final no, point. This is great. A final point on this is that you may notice, and I've had this dream a ton, and a lot of people tell me they have these dreams, is, is that the dream that you're trying to walk, but you can't, you feel like your hand, your legs are heavy, Joey is, uh, yes. is, your legs are heavy, and the monster is chasing you. You're trying to get away, but you can't. You're like, oh, I'm stuck. What's going on there? This is simply your motor cortex firing, so you're moving. But at the same time, in the brain stem, the lower part of the brain, there's a structure that's, in, that's called a central motor generator central motor generator. If the neurons there will go to the cortical regions and the outer layer of the brain and compete with the motor cortex. So if the central motor generator in the lower part of the brain is involved in automatic movements and the outer layer is involved in actual voluntary movements, the automatic center will sometimes, because it fires sporadically, like mm -hmm. it will overwhelm it's over, it will overwhelm the motor cortex. And for that reason, even though you feel like you can move, but then suddenly you feel like you cannot move. Okay? Understand? Yes. It's a very crucial point, actually. That explains why dreams feel so fleeting and you feel like you have control one minute, but then the other minute you don't have control. Yes. And it has to do with the fact that you have tons of neurons in the lower part of the brain overwhelming the more voluntary cortical regions. It's like they're competing with each they're other. They're competing more. and the lower parts are more aggressive and when they fire sporadically, suddenly they will overwhelm it. So if you are walking and you feel like you have control, suddenly you don't have control. And that's the automatic regions out, out competing, out wrestling these outer layers. And then you might add, before you go, then you might add, well, what's the mantra all about? The monster is literally a yeah. physical representation of your limbic emotional fear centers being 30% more active. So it manifests as a monster chasing you. So it's like if I were watching, if I had the activity monitor open on my computer yeah. and I were watching all the different places it was using the unified memory in, mm -hmm. th these are all the places it's capable of using it. Yeah. But depending on what I have open, Chrome, Spotify, you know, uh, YouTube, which would be in Chrome, uh, Adobe Premiere, Adobe Photoshop, and depending on what I'm actively using, some levels are going to be more, meaning they're going to take a bigger piece of the pie. If I'm understanding correctly, this is what's happening with different centers of your brain during a dream. You just don't control what's open and what's not. That's a beautiful metaphor. It's a beautiful metaphor. Thank you. Look at that. No, I love it. I See? love it. <laughs> See, he's like, no, you still might be. <laughs> Look, Julian, what I'm what I'm trying to say, and you put it very, you put it very nicely in that way. Your brain is set on a certain there's certain parameters. With this part being slowed down, this part being slowed down, this part being overactive, creating a a a, a the way your brain will express based on that. Literally, I can give you another example. As you know, I've been teaching a course on love at the Peterson Academy in we'll a few days. That, yeah. And so when you are in love, for example, another, let's analogy to the dream state. When you fall in love, your prefrontal cortex will shut down. Your logical part of the brain will shut down. Yep. Serotonin will go down. I'm talking about the infatuation stage. So serotonin, which is involved in well-being, will go away. You will have, when serotonin goes down, you become OCD. You start obsessing all the time. Okay. When you fall in love, dopamine goes up. You become like a cocaine cocaine head. You become like a crackhead. Okay? <laughs> I'm serious. I, I understand True. exactly what you mean. Yes. You have tons of dopamine, all right? Uh -huh. The TPJ region of the brain that has to do with empathy and like the psychopath, like trying to understand another per person's mind, becomes hyperactive because you're always trying to figure out what your uh. what the girl is or you know, girl is thinking right now. So that becomes hyperactive. Okay. Cortisol goes up, just like Julian when he's stressed. When in the infatuation stage of love, cortisol is through the roof. That's why you can't stay there for a very long time. Three to six months, you have to either break up or become a stable couple. Otherwise, you'll just wear yourself out. Literally, what I'm trying to say is that the dream state, or whether you are in cocaine or whether you are newly in love, the brain has a way of organizing yes. itself and your behavioral output will reflect that. 
your the mental activity will reflect exactly how that the brain is set in that in that um, the the false state of, of that situation. That's perfectly explained. Cool, Joe. We're watching a superstar being born today. I don't know if you haven't Thank picked you, up on that. I, I know you have, Thank but you, I, I I I think I, that, I think you're gonna have a future on a lot of screens around here. But Thank you, brother. You're, the way you explain things is really amazing, and it, and it also it. like everyone out there this these are human experiences right we all dream we all can think of it like from our perspective and be like oh maybe that's why this or that but one of the things i keep on thinking about while you're going through all the different parts of the brain that are working for and against each other in some ways yeah. to create a dream is the fleeting nature of those dreams and what i mean by that is i will dream vividly and know that i dream vividly yeah I will usually remember most of the dream the second I wake up yep. at, at, at 6.15 in the morning. But there are some days where by 6.21, I don't remember any of it. Yeah. And some days at 6.21, I remember all of it. And I remember it days later and yep. months later yep. and, and years later. Right. Like last night's dream, I can tell you play by play what happened. Right. The dream I had like three nights ago, right. I remember it was fucking crazy. I couldn't even tell you where it was or who was in it. Right, right, right. right. Why is that? Why Why do we have like selective memory it's a of good dreams? Point. It's a good point. So I always make it a point to emphasize that we the whole night, right? So you have eight hours of sleep. Julian has six or seven. Most of us have eight. I I I, get, I it, do seven or eight now. Seven yeah. is good. So yeah. That's that seven yeah, yeah. seven hours, right? And that whole whole you know sleep um, architecture, one third is in REM. In REM, you have dreams. Whether you remember them or not, you actually dream right. in REM the entire night. Uh, entire REM stages dream. In fact, in the other stages of sleep, you also have some fragment fra fragments of dreams. Dreams are, have less of a story plot. They are less cohesive. They are less story-like, but there are still some dreams in the other stages. So you have tons of opportunities to dream. Now, Julian is asking, then how come I don't remember my dreams, right? Why do I have a few dreams that I do remember? And the reason is this. Remember I told you that serotonin shuts off. Remember I told that? Yes. Serotonin goes down during REM. And noradrenaline also goes down during REM. That's why we have, why we are, things are spacey and all that. That's, right. that's, in, that's the REM, that's the, that's the REM phenomenon. So these two chemicals go down, and because serotonin and noradrenaline shuts down in REM sleep, you need those chemicals in order to take memories from the hippocampus, the memory part of the brain, <laughs> wow. and place it in the, in the cortex to store the memories. Wow. In other words, you have the memories, but they're not stored. The brain, because of these two chemicals being absent, is much more output fixated than input fixated meaning input it doesn't create it doesn't store new memories but it just builds stories all the time it's output generated it's output fixed and the reason for that is also there's another chemical and I'm, I'm throwing chemicals at you but it's important and it's very simple actually there's a chemical called acetylcholine in the lower part of the brain that fires up the brain so it's always in the business of creating new stories new stories new stories but never because of that hippocampal region being deactivated and, and and not deactivated, but lacking these chemicals to store them. Does that make sense? Yes. It's basically that. That's it. The hippocampus can't store new memories in the same manner. But sometimes it can, sometimes it fires in a way that it does. And this is really it. This is it. Then when you wake up, and this is the crucial point of all this, when you wake up, the wakefulness process itself in, entails a surge of serotonin and neuroadrenaline yes. flooding your brain. That's why when you actually wake up, the dreams you do remember are the last few minutes of the, the dreams you just had. You don't remember the whole REM thing. That's actually what you remember are only the last few minutes of the dreams. The last, I mean, the one last night was so detailed, so many, that's only a few minutes? Well, we'll get into that too. Why dreams feel so expanded. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.